So I think for me, it's exciting of like, like electric vehicle fan. I'm like, wow, this next generation technology is, I already think in many ways, a Tesla is a lot cheaper to own than you realize because of the maintenance and, and gas savings um, and just electric vehicles in general. But now that they're going to last so much longer, the economic equation is pushing even more in their favor in their direction. So on, on that note, I'm kind of curious, like, you know, what's your take on just the EV market as a whole and the adoption that we've seen? Because up until this point, at least in the US, it's pretty clear Tesla's dominating in mar market share. They're really driving the adoption. So I'm curious, like, is that how you see it continuing for a while? Or do you think that'll change and some of these other players will help facilitate that market share? Oh, I think it'll definitely change. I think most of the, you know, the, the large automakers have been waiting, biding their time. Um, they don't want to cannibalize their existing sales and, and you know, they'd be very careful about it. Obviously, uh, companies like Volkswagen have jumped in, you know, jumped right into the deep end now um, on it. And, and I certainly wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't bet against them. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of good work going on there. But, um, you know, I, I think it's it's important to understand that um, uh, the, the demographic who are largely buying electric vehicles today are people who are spending you know, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year on a car, and and they can um, they can afford a, a large battery that has a long range and that will last a long time. And the problem is, as you scale down into entry level, if you want to get down to the twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollar car, um, that battery is going to the, the, the basically the, that battery is going to get charged and discharged way more often, and it has to be able to last. It has to be able to last beyond a thousand cycles. A thousand cycles is fine if you're charging effectively once every ten days, which is you could probably put most Teslas in that range. Most people drive 50 kilometers a day and it's a 500 kilometer battery. And uh, so it's a, it's basically a 10 day charge cycle on that battery. And so a thousand cycles, that's a uh, 10,000 days. That's a lot of years. And, uh, but if you now, if you have to charge and discharge it every second day, it starts to make a big difference. And, and the key is to find a battery that lasts longer, uh, that can do that and provide the range. And right now, uh, the NMC materials are the only ones that can really pack enough range into that battery to make a difference. And, the, and you know, so what I see is on the, on the, um, and certainly on the longer range luxury or quasi luxury uh, electric vehicle space, you're going to start to see uh, the, the price come down. A longer lasting battery will give uh, the uh, EV companies more comfort on warranty because warranty is really what drives the price of all this. And so that as they get more comfortable with warranty, they'll derate the battery less and you'll be able to squeeze more out of it and that'll help them drive the cost down. So uh, that's a big part of it. Um, uh, most people don't understand that batteries are all derated. Um, they're derated. You, you build a really big battery and then you only use a component of it. Yeah. Right. And, and you stay away from the, the safety edges on the battery. You don't charge it to its full voltage or down to its lowest voltage. You, uh, you work within a safety range uh, that meets your warranty specs and meets your safety specs. And, so, or sorry. Uh, so that's on, that, that's on the, that's really on uh, what I see on the kind of longer range of luxury vehicle, but let's take the flip side. And this is something that very few people in North America think about that everyone wants to drive 500 kilometers. Um, in China, one of the largest, one of the most uh, popular selling vehicles is, is something that's 150 or 180 kilometers a day. And that's largely lithium iron phosphate. BAIC sell a car there that's probably somewhere close to eight to $12,000 for an electric vehicle that does 100, 180 kilometers a day. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So, so, and I think, so, so from the, from the bottom end of the market, um, you start to see very different dynamics because there, if you're going to have a car that's kind of a lower range, like that, you got to be able to charge it more often and you need a battery that lasts longer. And that's kind of where the lithium iron phosphate comes in. Um, that battery, that battery material has a really heavy duty cycle on it because of, because of that, and you need a, you need a longer lasting battery. Now if NMC can then come in and, and do that as well, uh, there's a really some really exciting uh, dynamics that come out of that. So we you know, we have to get we have to get over the cost uh, uh, the, the relative cost of manufacturing those batteries, but that will come with time. And it sounds like it's kind of just like the trade off of batteries. There's lots of you know your it's the like I think I heard you say this in one of your interviews. It's like a game of trade offs of like do you want less range or it yeah. to last longer, and that's kind of the game. And we'll see different battery form factors for different use cases, kind yes. of like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, with different form factors and different chemistries as well. Uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's coming out. You've got the nickel, manganese, cobalt-based batteries. Um, uh, and, of course, everyone's trying to thrift out the cobalt. And, and there's, there's trade-offs there with safety and, and durability. Totally. Uh, 
but um, uh, and, and, and then there's lithium iron phosphate, which really has you know, more industrial or very, very cost sensitive applications anywhere where, where, where the cost is driving the decision rather than, let's say, a, a luxury vehicle where brand is actually driving a lot of the decision. Um, um, it'll, it makes a lot of sense.